Hello, I'm Cliff Sarantine. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Wildwood Ways, Edible and Medicinal Treasures. Today we're going to answer, once and for all, how to conclusively tell carrot from its more dangerous cousin, the water hemlock or the poison hemlock. Those are two different types of hemlock, but they have a great deal in common. We're going to determine how to tell the carrot from them. Now, there are a number of myths about how to tell the carrot from the hemlock, and we really need to deal with those myths. One of the myths is that you can tell carrot because the flower umbels, shown here, have a dark dot in the middle. Now that's often the case, however you can't rely on the presence of that dot because the dot can easily be knocked off by an insect or a small animal or the wind, as you saw me just do here. The hemlocks, the hemlock umbels don't have dots in the center of their blossoms. The carrots often do. You can see them here and there not there as you can see, there but just barely, and not there as you can see. Now I didn't touch any of those other umbels, I just flicked the dot off that one. So you can't go by that. Carrots, and this is a wild carrot in front of me, do have some distinguishing traits though. So among those many traits, carrots have hairy stems which you can see here. And the hemlocks, both the water and the poison hemlock, have smooth stems. Carrot stems are also, by and large, green. And there's little deviation in that. Carrots create feather-like leaves that are very soft. If you feel them, they're very soft. They're deeply lobed. Now these leaves have some superficial similarity to the leaves of the hemlocks. But if you look at the hemlocks versus the carrot leaves, you quickly come to see that the carrot leaves are distinctly different. By the way, you can study the carrot leaves just by looking at the leaves that may be attached to carrots you might get from your grocer or local farmer's market. The wild carrot is genetically the same as the domestic carrot. The umbels of the wild carrot form a kind of bird's nest. Now this one is not very concave, but this one here is quite concave. And this one here, which has lost its blossoms, has become extremely concave. Though you can stick your finger right down the center of it and open out that bird's nest. But it's called a bird's nest for the, ob for the obvious reason that it's concave, much like a bird's nest. The umbels are also tightly packed the individual groups of flowers are also very close together so that they appear to be a single cluster. With both of the poison hemlocks, you'll discover that the umbels are quite spread out so that they appear to be umbels within umbels, sub-umbels. And the umbels are small, tiny flowers that cluster together in groups with about the diameter of a dime to a quarter. While carrot umbels, on the other hand, can be quite small. Here's my knife for comparison. That's a five-inch blade. to fairly large. This umbel here is close to three times the diameter of the umbel we just looked at. The wild carrot is not hollow, rather the inside has a white pith. And if you were to take the, any part of the wild carrot, except the root, you must not use the root for this test, and mush it up in your hands and smell it, as I just, just did, you would notice a distinctly carrot smell. So the distinctive traits of the wild carrot are the thick clustered umbels that look almost like a solid flower but are actually a dense collection of hundreds or even thousands of tiny flowers. The dark blue dots at the dead center of the umbel. That the umbels as they age often form a bird nest pattern. That the stems of the wild carrot are hairy and have a white pith in the center and that the wild carrot at the leaves and, and that the wild carrot at the leaves and stems has a distinctive carroty smell. Now I told you earlier that you can't use the root to check for that distinctive carroty smell and here's why. The root of a wild carrot does smell carroty of course but so does the root of the water hemlock. I'm not sure about the poison hemlock there aren't any around here I can check 
but I can guarantee you the root of the water hemlock smells quite carroty as well. The rest of the water hemlock does not. The most important traits for identifying the wild carrot are that hairy stem, the fact that the stems are solid, and the fact that the entire plant smells strongly of carrot. This plant is water hemlock. This is one of the seven deadliest plants in the world. It contains a significant concentration of a naturally occurring neurotoxin that can kill a cow in a mere 15 minutes. The somewhat potato-shaped and potato-sized tuber underneath, or you might think of it as parsnip-shaped and parsnip-sized tuber, especially as this plant is in the parsnip family, is where the highest concentration of toxin is. It occurs as a yellow oil and if I were to dig a few inches under the soil and extract that tuber, which I'm not going to do because it's so toxic that even handling it can cause illness or death, uh, but if I were to dig that out and cut that open you would see a yellow oil appearing within that tuber and that's the neurotoxin. Fortunately for wild carrot hunters the hemlock can be easily distinguished. One, its flower umbels are divided into sub umbels, whereas the wild carrot's umbels all come together to make an almost solid cluster of tiny blossoms. You can see here that the hemlock's blossom clusters are divided up into smaller umbels, like sub umbels within the umbels. Two, the stem is reddish rather than greenish. Three, the reddish stem is smooth unlike the wild carrot which has a hairy stem. Four, the leaves of the water hemlock are much more like small discrete leaves. They are in fact the leaflets of a larger leaf. Now, this is very important. You can see that the stem of the water hemlock is hollow. Wild carrots are never hollow, they always have a white pith inside. But the poison hemlock is hollow. But if you lean forward and smell it, you're going to notice an unpleasant chemical smell. Some persons in my experience are more sensitive to that chemical smell, others aren't. I can really smell it. It smells to me a bit like phenol or paint thinner. Whether or not you're sensitive to it, this plant does not smell like something you'd want to eat. It smells like something chemical, unhealthy, and indeed it is. Eating any part of this plant is life-threatening. Eating so much as a few of its leaves could potentially kill a man. As I said earlier, the root tuber, which is shaped somewhat like a parsnip or a potato, is so deadly that it could kill a bull in 15 minutes. It could kill a full-grown man in just a few minutes. It could kill quite a few people over the space of an hour or two. I wouldn't even want to estimate how many people this one plant could kill if they consumed it. I would guess dozens. The water hemlock is one of the seven deadliest plants in the world. It's fairly common in Nova Scotia and it occurs elsewhere. We also have the poison hemlock here, but I can't demonstrate to you how to distinguish the poison hemlock as it simply doesn't occur in this area. But. Both these plants are in the parsnip family, so they have some resemblance, but there are key traits that truly distinguish them. The water hemlock and the poison hemlock have reddish stems, and as they age, they get redder, whereas the wild carrot stem is always green. The water hemlock has larger leaflets, and the poison hemlock has smaller leaflets that resemble the carrot more closely, but they're very, very large. They're much larger than that of the carrot. The easiest way to ensure that you can identify the edible carrot leaf is simply to pick up domestic carrots from a farmer's market or a grocery and study the leaves well. Get them with the green tops and study those leaves well. Get to know them. Also, the other key element is that the stems of the water hemlock and the poison hemlock are hollow and they have an unpleasant or unhealthy chemical smell. You may be more sensitive to this and find it to be very unpleasant. That's my case. But many of my students don't notice the smell as much. I'm not sure if that's simply because they're less used to them. 
or because humans are not really used to using their sense of smell. We actually have a fairly good sense of smell as a species, we just don't use it. We're so visually and auditorily focused as a species. This plant is exceedingly dangerous, I cannot stress that enough. Do not even handle this plant. For those who are herbalists or serious foragers or merely curious to know even more, there is a proof positive to definitive way to ensure that you have the water hemlock versus any other plant in the parsnip family. Flip the leaves over and look at the undersides of them. You'll see the leaf veins. If the leaf veins go to the end of the teeth, you have a poison hemlock or something else in the parsnip family. If the leaf veins go to the notches between the teeth, you have a water hemlock. And you can see in this case that the leaf veins do indeed go to the notches between the teeth. This is definitively a water hemlock. This plant is even more dangerous than the legendary poison hemlock. It still works by the same principles. It just has a greater concentration of the toxin, especially in the tuber. Now, some field guides I've seen, and especially some videos I've seen on YouTube, say that the water hemlock is significantly smaller than the poison hemlock. Let me tell you, in the, in the right growing circumstances, the water hemlock gets exceedingly large, and there are water hemlocks just up this path in the forest that are six and seven feet tall. Now I have seen images of poison hemlocks further south that are eight and nine feet tall, so I suppose they are a little, they are a little bigger. But the water hemlock has a great deal of variety in its size. The water hemlock can be as small as just a foot or two tall in certain growing conditions, and it can become exceedingly large in other growing conditions. In any case, you can always distinguish that you're handling a poisonous hemlock by the hollow stem and the chemical smell and the white umbels of many blossoms that are divided up into sub-umbels. Like me, if you're actually going to handle this plant, you should put on a latex glove. Now, earlier I touched this plant without a glove, just brushing it up on the stem. I don't even like to do that, but the upper parts are safe enough doing that because I opened this plant up to show the hollow inner portion. I decided to put on gloves. Be safe with this one. Now you know how to distinguish the poison hemlock and the water hemlock from the wild carrot. You can use this information to go out and forage more safely. Have fun, and I'll see you next time on Wildwood Ways, Edible and Medicinal Treasures. Let's go home, boy.